Dear students, I hope you are all well and studying in your home. Last week, we discussed about how wool is prepared from the fabric. Today, we are going to discuss about the life history of silk moth. The female silk moth lays eggs from which hatch larva which are called caterpillars or silkworms okay they grow in size and when the caterpillar is ready to enter the next stage of its life history called pupa it first weaves a net to hold itself then it swings its head from side to side in the form of figure of 8 during these movements of the head the caterpillar secretes fiber made of made of a protein which hardens on exposure to air and becomes silk fiber okay so life history of caterpillar given means you have to know that how silk is formed soon the caterpillar completely covers itself by silk fibers and turns into pupa this covering is known as cocoon the further development of the pupa into Moth continues inside the cocoon. So you have to see in figure 3.9. Okay. This is male caterpillar larva and this is female adult silk moth. So sorry, these are adult silk moth of male and female and axon mulberry leaves. Okay, it is found in mulberry leaves, mulberry plant. Okay, so it changes into silk worm first, then it further changes into cocoon and cocoon with developing mouth. Silk fibers are used for weaving silk clothes. Can you imagine that the soft silk yarn is as, as strong as comparable thread of steel. The silk yarn is obtained from the cocoon of the silk moth. There is a variety of silk moths which look very different from one another and the silk yarn is yield is different in texture okay that is its coarse smooth shiny etc thus tassar silk muga silk kosa silk etc are obtained from cocoons spun by different types of moths the most common silk moth is mulberry silk moth okay most commonly used to make silk silk moth is mulberry silk the silk fiber from the cocoon of this moth is soft, luster and elastic and can be dyed in beautiful colors. Okay, so we make different beautiful uh, colors, a uh, colorful silk from these cocoons. Sericulture or culture of silk worm is a very old occupation in India. India produces plenty of silk on a commercial scale. Okay, on a commercial scale, we produce many silk. Now we read about how cocoon is then transported to silk. For obtaining silk, moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get silk threads. First, shearing of silk worm studs. Okay, as we read in the formation of wool. A female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time. The eggs are stored carefully on strips of clothes or paper and sold to silkworm farmers. The farmers keep eggs under hygienic conditions and under suitable conditions of temperature and humidity. The eggs are warmed to a suitable temperature for the larva to hatch from eggs. This is done when mulberry trees bear a fresh crop of leaves. The larva called Caterpillars are silk worm, eat day and night and increase enormously in size. You can see this is a mulberry tree and this is leaf of mulberry and cocoons are this type found in mulberry plants. Okay. There are different processes. First is a female silk worm laid eggs and then it increase in size by eating the leaves. Okay. And last cocoon is formed. So how discovery of silk takes place? The exact time of discovery of silk is perhaps unknown. According to an old Chinese legend, the Empress 
Silongji was asked by the emperor Wang Ti to find the cause of the damaged leaves of mulberry trees growing in their garden. The empress found white worms eating up mulberry leaves. She also noticed that they were spinning shiny cocoon around them. Accidentally, a cocoon dropped into her cu cup of tea and a tangle of delicate threads is separated from the cocoon. Silk industry began in China and was kept a closely guarded secret for hundreds of years. Later on, tra traders and travelers introduced silk to other countries. The route they traveled is still called the Silk Route. So, this is how discovered. See, we discovered the silk. And then what processes take place in formation of silk? The larva are kept in clean bamboo trays along with freshly chopped mulberry leaves. After 25 to 30 days, the caterpillar stop eating and move to a tiny chamber of bamboo in the tray to spin cocoons. Okay, as you see in figure 3.10 earlier. Okay. So whenever you read it, you go through figure also. Small rags or twigs may be provided in the trays to which cocoons get attached. The caterpillar or silkworm spins the cocoon inside which develops the silk moth. Okay, then processing of silk is take place. A pile of cocoon is used for obtaining silk fiber. The cocoon are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam. The silk fiber separated out. The process of taking out threads from the cocoon to use for use as silk is called reeling in the silk. Reeling is done in spherical machines, special machines which unwind the threads or fibers of silk from the cocoon. Silk fibers are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by weavers. So this is the formation of silk from the cocoon. There is some activity also in your chapter which you have to do. You have to collect pieces of silk cloth of various types and paste them in your scrapbook. You can find them in a tailor's shop among the heap of waste cut pieces. Okay, you can do it easily and take help of your mother, aunt or teachers and identify the types of silk such as mulberry silk Tassa silk, Ari silk, Moga silk, etc. Compare the texture of these silks with that of the artificial silk pieces, which contain synthetic fibers. Try and collect pictures of different modes whose caterpillars provide the various type of silks. So this activity you can easily do. And next activity is take an artificial synthetic silk thread and a pure silk thread. Burn these threads carefully. Did you notice any Difference in smell while burning. Now burn a woolen fiber carefully. Did it smell like burning or of artificial silk or that of pure silk? Okay, can you explain why? So after burning, you can easily identify them. To remember when the cocoon stage is reached in the life history of the silk moth, try to the following activity. Okay, if you find mulberry tree, you can do easily. Photocopy figure 3.9 cut out pictures of the stages of the life history of the silk moth and paste them on piece of cardboard or chart paper okay you have to just uh, paste on that picture of uh, life history of silk moth or caterpillar larva jumble them now try and arrange the stages in the correct sequence in a cyclic form whoever does it first it wins you may also describe the life history of in your own words write it down in your scrapbook okay so if you make this type of book it is good and you can do it easily at last in this chapter you have been learned about the silk comes from the silk worms and wool is obtained from sea coat and yak hence silk and wool are animal fibers the hairs of camel lalma and alpaca are also processed to yield wool in india mostly sheep are reared for getting wool sheep here is sheared off from the body, is caught, sorted, dried, dyed, spun, and woven to yield wool. Silk worms are caterpillar of silk moth. During their life cycle, the worms spin cocoons of silk fibers. 
Silk fibers are made of a protein. Silk fibers from cocoon are separated out and reeled into silk threads. Weavers weave silk threads into silk cloth. Okay, so these are a very uh, interesting chapter and very easy chapter to understand. If you find still any difficulty, you can ask me. Thank you.